I'm Anne Edwards. I'm based in the Department of Education at Oxford University, and I'm here at the University of the Western Cape to be a kind of critical friend to a SACWA funded project that's based in the Division of Lifelong Learning. And that project's looking at flexible teaching and learning programs in the university. Um, it's an interesting project. It's uh, in is in two parts. There's a, a mapping project where they've been uh, looking at really interesting creative responses to flexible learning and teaching across the university. And then there are three action research sites, which are programs that are really working very hard at developing uh, flexible teaching and learning. Um, and I've been involved in discussions about that project now for the last week and a half. And one of the things that has become very clear to me here at at this university is just how much the thinking about flexible learning that's going on is relevant right across um, the university, whether students are full-time or part-time, because South Africa is just like the UK. So many full-time students are working part-time as well. And so what can be learned about flexible learning uh, from this project, I think, can benefit uh, people, students, right across the university. So. Um, What's been learnt from the project? Well, I'm just going to pick on, on a, a couple of things that relate very much to my work. And one is that there have been some really interesting creative responses to flexible learning uh, across the university. And those are being surfaced in the project, in the mapping part of the project. Um, the other part that's coming out in, in the project is actually flexible learning means different things to different people and I think that's absolutely okay. Flexible learning needs to be a scene in response to what matters to you in the subject you're teaching, the students group, student groups you're catering, whether they're doing straightforward undergraduate degrees or they're doing professional training. And so flexible learning needs to be designed and shaped in a way that suits the kind of pedagogy that, that you want and that's important for for your students regardless of, of, of where you are. So it's not about imposing a particular model. So what's come out of that project is, um, I think, the beginnings anyway of a wealth of knowledge about what makes for good flexible learning, which may or may not involve uh, new technologies. I think all these, these are very interesting discussions to have. So why have they invited me along uh, to talk about it and, and to be the critical friend to the project? Well, over the last 15 years or so, um, I've been looking at how people collaborate across boundaries. My work has actually been based in the welfare pre professions in the UK. But over the last few years, people have been picking up those ideas and using them in a whole range of sites across the world in very exciting ways. And this is, this is one of the sites. And the three ideas that I've been working with uh, are, and the first one is this notion of relational expertise. And I think the relational expertise means having a core expertise, whether you're a lawyer or a nurse or a physiotherapist. And also then, in addition to that, having the capacity, the relational capacity, to take the standpoint of the other uh, and to be able to see what matters for the other. And I think that's absolutely crucial for the Division of Lifelong Learning and for the people they're going to be working with if the um, provision is developed from this excellent knowledge base they've got because the the new ideas that are emerging in this work do need to be negotiated they do need to be negotiated into new systems whether they're undergraduate degrees or professional learning um, opportunities so relational expertise is extremely important uh, what enables that kind of um, negotiation is the second idea that I come with in my carry-on luggage and that is a notion of common knowledge. You're not going to be able to do that uh, negotiation unless attention is paid to what matters, the motives for the people you're working with. So we've been discussing how those kinds of negotiations can happen so that people who have got the strong pedagogic knowledge, the understanding of flexible teaching and learning, can listen very seriously to what matters for lawyers, for physiotherapists and so on, um, in order to build up common understandings. So that common under those common understandings are made up of the motives, the what matters for people in their work, whether they're focusing on pedagogy, on ICT, or on training lawyers or carpenters or whatever they're doing in, in any any walk of life. Um, and so 
the building of common knowledge seems to me to be the next step for the division of lifelong learning to create the kind of fora where the motives, the purposes for uh, flexible learning um, can be made explicit, can be discussed. And then common knowledge then becomes a resource that can be used, that can be deployed in order to negotiate these new understandings about pedagogy into new programmes across boundaries, if you like. The third concept I, I come with um, is, is called relational agency. And there it's that concept, in, in a nutshell, involves looking at a problem, which might be how do we help um, young people um, access university coming straight from school but without perhaps the kind of backgrounds that they might need, how we look at that problem and then expand it from a variety of perspectives, perhaps from a perspective of uh, understanding the social conditions that these young people are living in, understanding uh, what backgrounds they bring, understanding the demands of the course, understanding the kinds of assessments that will help them um, prepare um, for, <coughs> excuse me, prepare for their courses. And what relational agency does is remind people that they're in this together, and they if they can under if they can expand their understanding of the problems that they're having to deal with, they can then negotiate how they deal with those problems in creative ways that are actually good for the students. And that common knowledge that I mentioned as the second idea that I brought with me becomes a really, really important resource for negotiating those understandings about how students can be supported. So I'm here to have discussions with the Division of Lifelong Learning about how they can start to conceptualise taking that really useful knowledge that, that is already here, distributed across the university, into other parts of the university, spread it more broadly, negotiate it in ways that are useful for colleagues wherever they uh, are wanting to learn how to support students from a whole range of different backgrounds.